Okay, so quite a few of you are struggling um, to get started with this Excel, and while I hope that you are not trying to do it without working through the entire blend space, um, I uh, decided I'd go ahead and make a little video uh, that can kind of give you um, some guidance on how to do this. If you have not worked through the blend space um, before starting it, then you do need to go back and do this. Very I know the first one is long. The rest of them are not that long. Um, but it is very foundational and you need a good foundation uh, to be able to do the rest of this. So I'm starting in Excel with a new blank worksheet. Uh, that's step one, uh, save um, is a appropriate name. Hopefully you can do that. Uh, I'm not gonna step that. Rename the sheet one tab documentation. I come down here, double click, I type in documentation, oops, um, and I did that. Now, if you are um, doing a worksheet that other people might be looking at in Excel, it's a good idea to have some sort of documentation information so people know who developed it, what it was for, when it was developed. Um, so I might put uh, created by and then add my name and I'll put creation date put today's date in and I come over here and put purpose and uh, it's uh, sales analysis for the first half of the year. Okay, so um, we've got that and I will do just the column widths a little bit there, so that's fixed. And then the other thing I'm supposed to do is insert uh, my logo on the documentation page. And you should be adding your logo to pretty much everything. Um, you, I haven't been strict about it with your assignments, but uh, like I said, if you're doing a presentation on the front page, that's nice to do, or um, somewhere else. I think I'll have something in here maybe that'll work as a logo. Let's see. <laughs> Here's my logo. Um, okay, so um, we've got that. Then we're going to go in here uh, to the next tab. This is step, so that was step um, four. Step five is uh, rename the sheet two tab sales data, and this is technically sheet three because um, I already put some numbers in, so I could copy them um, for you. That for that, but uh, you'll have to hit plus to add a sheet. Um, if you need to, you could just let it hit plus, will add a blank sheet um, for that. Okay, uh, sales data in cell A1, give the worksheet a title and format it to me. Um, nice, so sales data for the Batman company. Okay, so um, something like that works. Um, can you format it? You can format however you want to. I'm partial to using uh, the title style here in um, Excel, uh, just as a pre-formatted cell style that lets me format things quite um, nicely. Okay, and then starting in cell B3, so that's this one, add the months. Now I'm going to type January here because that's the first month, um, and then I'm going to use my fill handle. So I want January through June, so I will go over here till June. The fill handle is that little black box in the corner there, and when you're pointing to it, you get a skinny black plus. And when you drag a month, it will fill with the rest of the months of the year. It recognizes patterns and works quite nicely. Um, down the left-hand side, um, we need items, and I am not going to get fancy on this. I'm going to do... Okay, you would make something up, so if you're selling... Um, you know, if your company's Nike, it might be shoes and T-shirts and, um, you know, socks or whatever else it is. You would put items. I'm not going to take the time in the video to make stuff up. Um, so we have the six items that we might sell. And then, I, I said, I stuck some sales figures in here so that I wouldn't have to type them on the video. Okay. But you would make up numbers. Doesn't matter what they are. Just get some numbers in there to work with. Um, you just want the total to be more than 10,000. 
um, for each item. So over here at the end of the um, thing, we'll, we need a total and an average. Okay. Um, we're going to use functions to do that. So if I want the total of all these items, I would come over here to auto sum, choose sum. It's going to guess what range I want to sum. In this case, um, it's guessing correctly, so I can press enter, uh, and that sums it. Now, the fill handle that we used for the, the um, months also works for formulas, so I can fill this formula down. Um, for the rest of the items. I don't have to enter the formula six times. Now I'm going to do the average, and I'll choose average from the drop down. Now in this case, it's going to guess what I want to average, but it's guessing wrong. Okay, you can see here it's including the total, and you don't want to include the total in the average. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to highlight so that it's not including the total. Okay, so um, it's just B4 through G4 and press enter. And again, once I get my correct formula in there, I'm going to fill it. Boom. And I've got that there. Okay. Um, for each month, find the total and average. So I need to come over here. That's step um, 11. Okay. So we've got our total and our average. Okay. And we want a total. Yep. Total and average is row 10 and 11. Um, functions to do this. Okay, yep. All right, and again, another little shortcut. If I want to sum a whole bunch of things, I can come up here and hit the sum button, and it'll stick sums for each of those in there. And then again, with the average, if I don't want to have to fix the range, I can actually highlight the range, come over here, and choose average from the list, and it will stick the average in the next um, blank cell, and you see how that range is correct because it doesn't include the total. So that's a little trick on um, doing the average. Now, uh, that was step 11. And it says skip a row and add a row for the profit for each month in row 13. So profit there. Um, so A13, the profit for each month is 15% of the total sales. So this is just straight multiplication. I start with the equal. I click on the total sales for the month. I multiply, that's the times, the asterisk, 15%. Okay, I can type in 15%, I can type in 0.15, it doesn't really matter. Excel um, will multiply by the right thing uh, regardless. And again, once I have a formula that works, the best thing to do is use that fill handle to copy it. Okay, and I actually want to use a sum function, I think, here. Let's use the sum function for that one. It's going to sum across, and that's correct. Okay. Um, so that was step 13. Step 14, apply text formatting to make the column headings stand out. So I'm going to come up here. Again, I like cell styles because it's a shortcut. I'm going to pick heading 3. I'm going to center it. Okay. There I have nicely formatted um, headings for my labels. Um, Apply number formatting to make the numbers easy to read and understand. So again, I can, um, I'm going to select this range and I'm going to use comma. Comma is a uh, decimal, yeah, it just uses comma delimiters um, to show the thousands places. I'm actually going to come down to profit since this is currency and I'm going to make that uh, dollars just so we know from looking at the spreadsheet right away that it is dollars. Um, Adjust the column width so all columns are easy to read. I think they're all okay. Uh, double clicking here will make the column just as wide as it needs to be. Um, the total and profit rows, um, this is step 17, contain the most important information. So use some kind of formatting to make these stand out. Okay, so I could come here and um, I like the total cell style. That's one way of doing it. Um, apply that. Okay, another thing people like to do is you could just do some fill. So you could do, you know, a nice, that's kind of pale, but some sort of shade. Let's go a little bit darker. Okay, to make it pop. Whichever um, you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Um, step 18 is create a basic column chart showing each of the items by month. 
Um, so we select a range of data. We'll start with A3, even though it has nothing in it. We're going to include the names of the months and the names of the items, but we're not going to include any totals. I'm going to insert, and I'm going to come over to Charts, and I'm going to choose a column chart. Just do 2D. Okay, I can drag that down here. Um, let's see. Make it a little wider, like that. Um, let's see. This chart should have a labels for the x-axis that show what the column groups are. That's January, February, March. Those are the groups. Um, and then um, the legend is item 1, item 2. So we can see item 1 in January and match that up. And then we'll give it a title up here. Don't leave the words chart title, um, we can call it uh, sales of items by month or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as I know what I'm looking at. Um, and that is it. That's that's the first um, unit uh, for Excel unit assignment. So um, anyway, hopefully that helps you if you're stuck on anything. And we, of course, can always talk about stuff in class if you have other questions.